Okay, so for section A of the assignment, for part one, we need to describe the background theory. So for each of the coefficients A and the constants X and H, we need to explain what they do to the quadratic pairing function and how they transform it. The coefficient A has two transformations. It has the stretch and contrast transformation, and it has the reflection transformation. K has one transformation, H has one transformation. For each set of transformations, we want to have a different row of a table in our document explaining what the transformations are, how they look, show some examples, and explain the theory. So we need to do that in our document. So here's our document. We've got our title page here. So to start onto a new page in the uh, Word document, we could insert, we can scroll down here to break, and then we can choose page break. This will bring us to the top of the next page. Then we can include our subheading. Our subheading for this is going to be describing the background theory. We can pop that in here. When you're working with a Word document, uh, an academic document, your body text should only be size 10, 11, or 12 font, and it should be a professional looking font like Arial or Times. Never use Comic Sans for a professional academic document. But titles and subheadings can be in bold. And they, or they could be slightly bigger. So I'm just going to make that one a little bit bold, a little bit bigger, give it the feel of a heading. Now I need the subheading in under this for y equals ax squared. So whenever we write mathematics on the computer, we just always write it in the equation editor. So all mathematics must be written in the equation editor. You can insert equation. Notice this little blue box, very subtly shown. The equation editor in Google Documents isn't as good as the one in Microsoft Word. But it's good enough for this document. So we need to show y equals a. Now we're going to want x squared. To get x squared, before we type the x, we want to select here the exponent tool. That will give us a couple of little boxes. The first box here is for the x, and then we press to the right on the keyboard, we'll get the squared in. We press to the right again, we're still in the equation editor. And then we can press right, and then we'll move out of the equation. Let me just show you some other tips for when working with brackets. When working with, we don't need it here for this one, I'll delete it in a second, but just to show you in advance, when we're doing one of the later ones, like for the H, we're gonna need a bracket. When we type in Y equals, and we want X bracket H squared, always use the uh, equation editor bracket. So we'll start off by filling in the exponent, and then we'll put in the brackets. We'll always use the brackets here. These brackets will grow and resize as the contents of the brackets change. So if you notice here, they're that big. If I put in a fraction for some reason, the brackets will grow. The brackets from the keyboard won't do that, so they'll look ugly, and, and we don't want it to do that. So let me just undo that a little bit. Let's say we wanted x minus h, and then we keep scrolling to the right. So Use the left and right keys on the keyboard to sort of move through these different constructs. We don't see them on Google Documents, but they're there, and we can find the right location so they sit nicely next to each other. And this is how we would work with a bracket. Let me just delete that one. Okay, so there's our pack. What we need now is a little table to organize our data. Data is in a Word document is best organized if you're using pictures and text on the document. We want to control how it falls on the page and the layout. The best thing to do is insert everything into a table. So we're going to insert a table. We'll make a three by two table for this one, and we can put our pictures in here. This, if you didn't have the table and you're trying to put them in, when you paste them in, they'll go quite large. You have to resize them, and then you'll be resizing each one individually, and they'll all make slightly different sizes. I want to make them all the same size, so I'll put them into a table. So now I need to make a picture of the parent function. So I'm here, I'm going to have the quadratic parent function. Here I'm going to have a compress. And here I'm going to have a stretch. I need to think in advance how the compress and the stretch are going to look and choose some axes so that the three pictures all have the exact same axis. The goal on this one is neatness. So as I take the different pictures for each one, I want to make sure I have the same size axes for each one. And you'll see that you've done this correctly and you've cropped it correctly because your x axes will line up. 
So that's the that's how I wanted to look at the moment. If you want to readjust one of the axes, or if you want to readjust both of the axes, you can zoom in and out. So I can zoom out, I can zoom in. Um, but if you want to, for instance, adjust just one axis, notice I've got, I'm going to go from 3 to minus 3, but I don't quite have it going high enough here in the Y direction. I can press and hold down the Shift key, and as I move my cursor over, I get the up and down. I can drag and hold on that one, and I can drag the Y axis down. So for this first set of examples, I'm going to go from minus 2 to 10 on the Y axis, 3 to minus 3 on the Y axis, on the X axis, sorry. It's going to make that one a little bit shorter. Take a screenshot and then crop that, depending whether you're using Word or, or sorry, depending whether you're using a PC or an Apple computer, it will look different how this appears. So it's a little bit easier on the Apples just to use the snipping tool. But I'm going to crop this image, and I'm being really careful here to see where I'm cropping it. I'm making sure that I'm cropping it just one little square box outside of 3, 3, minus 2, and 10. And then I'll make sure that I do all of the other two exactly the same way. So there's my parent function. Um, I'm sticking it in here somewhere. Now I want to do a compress. So I, I need to adjust this and put in some value for A. I'm going to use 0 0.5 for this. And this will make it give me a compress. I take a screenshot of that one. Notice that I've got this label here. Now, in standard, it won't give you the label. So what you need to do is click these three dots, choose settings, and then it says show label. I've got it set as the value. The default is to have a little F like that, which is the name. So over here, you can change that to the value. We can see the value for that one. Take a screenshot, paste it in here again. And then resize it to exactly the same um, scale that you did made the previous one. So I'll resize this one to the same scale and adjust the bottom and then paste it in to the document. Now, I can see that I'm successful if the x-axis here are lining up perfectly. If I'm not cropping to the exact same sizes, they won't line up. This one's good enough. So we go to our last one now. We want to have a stretch. So let's choose a value like 3. So I'm just making the values up to give an example for each one, what the stretch or compress should look like. So here we put in for a stretch. When you're making these three documents, when you're making these three pictures, it's really important that you don't move the screen around. You want to keep the axes exactly the same. If you resize them in the middle, you'll end up with problems. So I'm not changing my axes in between making each three pictures. Take a picture of that one, stick it into here, crop it in the same way. And that one can go here. So now I've got my x axes lined up, they look the same, I can compare them. You'll use a different scale for each transformation that you're trying to explain. For this transformation, I don't need the negative axis. So if you need the negative part of the axis or you throw the other transformations, you want to decide how much of the positive and negative you're going to need for each picture so that your parent function and your final picture have the same scale going across and your x-axis line up. You then need to add in the theory. So for this one here, we've got a compress. We should show what function it is that we're showing here on this one. I'm just going to insert an equation. This is y equals, um, this was a half, so I can use the fraction tool, 1 over 1 over 2, I pull up the exponent tool, x squared. Then you need to explain the theory. So to explain the theory for each one of these, um, this one here, you can find a lot of what we've talked about with the theory in your notes. So for each of these transformations, often in class I've written on the board and told you to copy down different statements. So for instance, for the vertical compress, 
This occurs when the absolute value of the function is less than one. So you need to know what the theory is. So in this case, we can say if insert equation, and we can get the absolute function here. If the absolute value of a is less than one, that implies that there is a vertical compress. We must also explain what the stretch does in the same kind of way. So each for each transformation, compare it to the parent function. Parent function is always y equals x squared. Um, choose the rest a scale that will show all three. Show an example, name the example, name the transformation, and explain the theory statement like this one. If you can't find the theory statements in your um, in your notes, you can find them in the notebook. So here on the document that I've made, I've included over here references to different papers. See page 161, see page 171. That refers to the textbook. The textbook you can find on the Google Classroom, here where it says textbook. So you've got three different PDFs. You can find it in the various different PDFs. Scroll down and you can see this page 159 through to 161. So here it talks about the vertical compress. And you notice there with the vertical compress is when we have the absolute value of A is less than one. Um, you can also find it sometimes in the summary tables, I think for the K value, you find it at the bottom of page 171. And here there's a little summary of the different theory statements, the type of things that you guys need to include when doing this. So. There's our little theory statement. So put in a different table for each of the four um, types of transformations. There's two related to A, one related to H, and one related to K. And hopefully that will bring you guys up to speed.